Previously, when I hear depression, I would say, oh, it's for some people, it's not for everybody. I'm a good person, have a seemingly okay life. Depression is for some people. It, it, it doesn't take much to be depressed. You hardly even know it when you are depressed until you begin to harm yourself. And the only consolation actually was my phone. I'd go to my phone, I'd go online and Google stuff to find out what really the problem was and why I was feeling the way I was feeling. Because mm. I know people have lost kids and they've dealt with it so well, seemingly okay. So I gave myself time. I thought maybe time would make me feel better. But even till this day, I still feel terrible. Depression can be used in various ways. We can use depression as a normal phenomenon. You get sad once a while, especially when you have reason to be sad. You can be sad, you can be depressed. That is normal. And depression could also be a symptom of an underlying illness. I guess we are talking about depression as an illness. So depression in that sense is actually a mental disorder. Depression is a common mental disorder characterized by persistent moodiness or loss of interest in daily activities, leading to significant impairment. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages, classes and creed suffer from depression. Possible causes include a combination of biological, psychological and social sources of distress. Increasingly, research suggests these factors may cause changes in brain function, including altered activity of certain neural circuits in the brain. Confused, lack of appetite, lack of interest, you know, you feel secluded, you feel all alone. That's how the feeling is like. And that normal circumstances, depression, you lose sleep, you lose weight, uh, you feel sad, uh, you feel tearful, uh, you crying spells, and all this may last for two weeks and more. You may hear voices insinuating or insulting you. Don't you realize that you are ugly? Don't you realize you are not worth it? And we call that clinical depression or depressive disorder or major depression. The final common pathway is that some chemicals are imbalanced in the brain. We have what we call neurotransmitters that are involved in your in the brain, your serotonin, and uh, so if you don't have enough of that at a certain a place we call synapse the junction between uh, two nerve cells when you don't have enough of it then you can get depressed the persistent feeling of sadness or loss of interest that characterizes major depression can lead to a range of behavioral and physical symptoms these may include changes in sleep appetite energy level concentration daily behavior or self-esteem We all can be sad, we all can be depressed one day or two days when you have reason to be sad. If I've lost a dear one, and that is good reason for me to be sad and, or depressed, that is normal. But that will last for just a two, three, four days. But whatever reason, if it lasts for more than two weeks, that is depression. Some of the reasons include um, stresses of life. You may go through stresses of life. You may have lost a dear one and you couldn't bear it or you couldn't stand it that kind of feeling that kind of impact then triggers this phenomenon where you don't have enough levels of the serotonin and you can be depressed i can't handle a lot of stress i've had a lot of relationship issues i've had issues with work and a number of things loss of a loved one among many other things but it always comes when i'm under too much stress then it starts by you losing your sleep. That is how it starts. And what you know how important sleep is. Once you lose your sleep, your mind can't function well. They lose interest in a lot of things, even pleasurable things like sex. For women, they become very, should I say, indecisive and suggestible. And people can easily take advantage of them. One of my my symptoms is hypersexuality. So it's more of like um i focus on sexual things more or like i'm sensual more 
or maybe i'll easily fall in love more it's just maybe it happens with the wrong people or at the wrong time so it doesn't really end well i think if i was a married woman and if i'm always hypersexual you know i'll be more sweet to my husband i would want to have sex more and i think that should work out fine between the two of us but maybe when you're single and then it means like you know you like to go out a lot you like to like hook up more because the mental health condition sometimes you don't really know where it actually started we live in a place where people don't actually believe that stuff like this uh medical and they happen so you you wonder why me it could have been malaria it could have been sickle cell you know if you have sickle cell and you're reacting like nobody goes like you're a sports person or you're immoral or whatever and there are times like you actually lose it you could like let me end it all like i'm causing too much pain to my family or my friends maybe if i'm really out that point you actually think that way but i'm in a support group me most of us are bipolar patients so you get someone to talk to they encourage you um and then it keeps you going it's not like something cut for some category of people for the poor for this middle class for the no because across everybody can suffer it and there is treatment for it i mean there is treatment so you need to walk into any health facility and get help the first one it was when things went overboard when i posted things on facebook and all those things and then my family took me to the hospital we went to a gynecologist first when we went to the gynecologist actually to my woman's hospital then he referred us to a cross psychiatric hospital he said um, I'm having a bipolar manic episode so that's when I got to know I didn't know before then oh well, you feel like there's no help you feel like you've gotten to the end of it all you know you feel like there's nothing you can do for me this thing has gone on for over 10 years and the thing is that I didn't want to accept it. According to the World Health Organization, 650,000 Ghanaians suffer from a severe mental disorder and a further 2,166,000 are suffering from moderate to mild mental disorder. When you talk about depression, it becomes like, ah, it's like something so strange or something new to people, but it is very real. We are not paying attention to it. I was diagnosed with alopecia areata. So growing up, I went through various stages of bullying and I lost basically everything. My childhood, my confidence. I hated everything about school, but I realized that almost everything I went through growing up stayed with me and it made me extremely depressed. I didn't like being around people because I was always afraid. I was always looking over my shoulders. At a point when I wanted to break out of this, I had to do therapy just to work with my depression before I was able to accept myself. We are in, in a situation where people are more likely to make fun of you even if you're depressed than giving you a helping hand and it's not helping. Ghana has 30 million people, but only 26 psychiatric doctors three psychiatric hospitals, seven community-based psychiatric inpatient units, four community residential facilities, and one day treatment center, with a mere 1.4% of the total health budget allocated to mental health, most facilities are isolated, understaffed, and poorly maintained. Most psychiatrists are mainly based in specialist hospitals in Accra, leaving other regions in Ghana with little to no access to mental health care. In the mental health law, you find the establishment of the mental health fund. This fund has been launched, but there is nothing in the fund. Government is supposed to commit to ensure that there is enough fund to overhaul mental health in Ghana. We always come to give the excuses that there is no money, but there are certain things that happen that we will find the money. We, we don't really know our priorities also when it comes to our own health. Because mental health is something that we should all be concerned about. And the other thing is that the National Health Insurance Scheme is not ready to take on board the various mental health conditions. Ordinarily, we would have thought that all the mental health conditions would be on the National Health Insurance Essential List. But how many are there? There are very few. So even if somebody comes to the hospital and there is no medication, 
the issue of the national health insurance funding it does not come into the play even the national health insurance scheme act looks at paupers and indigents so that even if you look at those vagrants lying on the streets under the bridge we should make a conscious effort to take care of them under the scheme because you have no families they are paupers they are indigents The Mental Health Authority reveals Ghana records about 1,500 suicide cases annually. The statistics are staggering, yet some cases go unreported because Section 57, Clause 2 of the 1960 Criminal Code of Ghana criminalizes suicide. Many civil society organizations have called for an amendment to scrap attempted suicide as a criminal offense. So double jeopardy, I mean, the person is already depressed, he's looking for a solution, he hasn't gotten, then he finds himself in the prison. I mean, what kind of complexity is this? And these laws, we took them from, I mean, we received them from the uh, common law uh, country, Britain. Over the years, they have changed this law. It's no longer there. But we still have it. What, what is wrong with us? And people know, they are aware that actually in Ghana, if you attempt suicide and you don't succeed, you'll be prosecuted. So once the person begins, he must end. Even if along the line he thought that, oh, let me change my mind. But you also think about the repercussion if you change your mind. I've been suicidal before I actually got to know that I have bipolar. And then afterwards, it's not like, okay, people want to end their life. They want to end that life of where they feel weak all the time, where they feel they don't have it all, where they feel like they are feelers, like that life that they are going through challenges. They want that life to end. Unfortunately, they feel okay, ending it all is the, is the solution. Within themselves, there's a lot of despair. Feelings of uh, worthlessness, hopelessness, uh, self-guilt, self-reproach, you know, all those things come to play. That suicidal thought where you feel you are worthless, you have no use, nobody likes you, nobody wants you around. If I, I basically went through um, a stage of um, dejection where people don't even want to come close to me because they feel when they do that, I would con I might, whatever I have is contagious. There were times when I would go on for days without eating because I didn't have the courage to probably even take a knife and stab myself. But well, maybe if I just stopped eating, I'll shrink away. You know, those thoughts. I have had patients who have had long-standing uh, chronic mental health problems and then you're not seeing them for a while the next time you talk to family they've committed suicide and quite often these are cases they won't even report it quietly they deal with it because of all those cultural uh, beliefs and the stigmatization it comes with they keep it under wraps and find some other reason that is pleasant to people and then just bury them. A lot of them are not reported. What we see in the media reportage is just a tip of the iceberg. I mean indeed when you look at it, the BHO estimates I mean it's a second leading cause between the ages of 15 to 29. Okay and it's estimated about 800,000 people kill themselves every year. So that is huge. The spate of suicides in Ghana, especially as recorded in 2017, when four cases of suicide were reported within a space of two weeks, with three of the victims being teenagers, led many civil society groups to intensify suicide prevention interventions. We were informed that one of our neighbors has committed suicide. We quickly ran to the scene and it was true. I hardly see him. I was at the funeral when they came to call me, Alex has committed suicide. First, there was the case of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology student who was reported to have hanged herself in her room. Then, the University of Ghana student was reported to have jumped from the fourth floor of a hall of residence to her death. 
A 16-year-old girl in New Tafo in the eastern region was also reported to have hanged herself in her mother's kitchen. And a young man in his 30s was found hanging on a tree around the Achimota forest. But sometimes it's pressure from family and society. Sometimes parents give us pressure too much. Come home with first class. Parents demand so much from their children, especially students who are in the university, Absolutely. that you must make this great. But this is the point that they need to turn their, that mentality that no, you shouldn't pressure the child to get this particular grade all the time. Each and every one has a different way of learning. You can have about four kids. Some, three could be good, one could be bad. That doesn't mean that the, 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 the last one who is bad can, cannot make it. So parental demand is too much nowadays. You should stop About demanding too much. Some parents say that you have to go and read yes. law, you yeah, have to go and read it. medicine. Yeah. So I, I believe I believe that this guy who had gone to cause this suicide now is thinking that this is not what I want to do. But my parents has like like actually forced me to go and read medicine, which is not what he wants. It will make myself depressed because I, I can't stand watching another person go through something which is not normal. Yes, so I think um, the first step I would take is to take the person to the hospital. I think they will be the best people to tell us what is really happening. And um, if there's any rehab or any institution or anybody that can help us try to bring the person back to the normal state, I would go to that extent to make sure the person comes back. I think that it's also another form of sickness that has to be paid attention to. Yes, and um, just like if somebody has malaria, there are symptoms the person shows. The same way if the person also is having a mental health situation, there are symptoms. And the same way I'll take paracetamol to cure maybe a pain or something, I think that the person also suffering from the mental health issue should also be given that attention. So basically, it's just a matter of degree. Everybody is sick in a way. It's just like a human body. Everybody has sickness. Except a matter of degree, we are all terminal cases. Everybody needs to check his mental health. Um, who is fit and who is not fit? It's just a matter of degree of how you can handle things. Uh, somebody may have a bereavement, he may be able to handle it very, very well, successfully, and go through. Somebody may have the same bereavement that may break him down. The stigma surrounding mental health is so rife, most families prefer to seek spiritual help due to inadequate information. Some families hide patients to avoid social stigma. I've been at the phase that I've been given concoctions and I, I guess I feel like, no, I'm not drinking this. They'll say so many things like, you owe this God somewhere or you did something to someone. Like, everybody comes up with a different story and then you go like, no, I'm tired, maybe I won't do this again. I didn't think that I could go through depression or something like that. More so, being a Christian, I'm like, no, I should be able to handle it. And I had never come to terms with medication. So even when they give it to me, I will stop by myself. Early identification and effective intervention is the key to successfully treating the disorder and preventing future disability. A healthcare professional will connect the symptoms of the patient with recognized diagnostic criteria to help formulate a diagnosis. You will also recognize in a friend, a colleague, a relative, a relation, anybody, by again the changes in him that you will see. Earlier, this is somebody who was bubbly, you converse with him, now he is withdrawn. You look at him, he's sad. He does not come to work early. If he comes, he cannot be productive. Probably just putting the head on the table and sleeping throughout. You give him work, cannot work adequately. His or her productivity goes down. This should alert you. Now, he does not come close to you again. He's always withdrawn. This should alert you that something is going on. If it goes further for the person to tell you that, I'm bored, I'm bored, I feel like dying. Often you hear that and we dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. That is serious. If you are really very close to the person, you can advise that, Charlie, brother, sister, there is something wrong. Let's go and see, or go for uh, counseling, go for advice, or go to see the doctor. Every illness has its duration. If you have depression, you need to treat you for a special severe depression, not less than two months. Could be as long as six months. There are many types of depression. While they share some common symptoms, they also have some key differences. The mainstay of treatment is usually medication, talk therapy, or a combination of the two. You need to recognize that you are at risk. 
no matter what. And so any issue that can come compound your situation, quickly resolve it. Even if you have a physical problem, a chronic condition, diabetes, sickle cell disease, hypertension, and you begin to realize that it's weighing down heavily on you, that in itself can lead to depression. Confront any issue, be it physical illness or social issue, stressful economic, confront and resolve it. Psychiatrists advise, when faced with mental health conditions, consider it just another illness and treat it as such. Just as you would seek medical attention for a headache, the flu or malaria, do so for your mental health. Nong Falong for TV3.